2012, Superstorm Sandy barrels up the eastern seaboard from Florida to Maine. The storm leaves millions in the cold and dark. Dozens die. A star-studded relief effort helps the Red Cross rake in more than 300 million in donations. This is the untold story of that Red Cross relief effort. How one of the nation's most revered charities bungled its mission and misled the public. I think that we are near flawless so far in this operation. I'm just so proud of everything that we are doing on the ground. It is incredible. But confidential documents and insider accounts paint a different picture. They lost confidence in their ability to do the right thing. And so they did the next best thing, which is what can we do to make people think that we're doing the right thing? And this, this investigation is based, as you mentioned, on uh, the Red Cross's internal uh, documents, some of their after-action reports, um, emails from the time, um, and also interviews with uh, a lot of officials uh, that were involved in the Sandy response, as well as victims in New York um, and New Jersey. And we found, um, first of all, that the Red Cross um, botched uh, the key elements of its, of its mission to provide relief after the storm. Um, and I think most disturbingly, we found that uh, one of the reasons for that was that uh, the Red Cross's leadership um, has become uh, so obsessed with uh, burnishing the brand and public relations um, that it's actually undermined uh, the disaster relief efforts and undermined some of the people on the ground, um, like Richard, who uh, were, were trying to, uh, you know, actually accomplish the mission of, of, uh, of delivering aid. Well, could you give us an example of how it is that the Red Cross diverted resources to maintain its image or for public relations purposes mm -hmm. rather than providing uh, resources to those in need? Sure. So one example, after uh, Sandy hit New York a couple of years ago, um, several officials, on the Red Cross officials on the ground, uh, told us that there were issues where the Red Cross's uh, emergency response vehicles, which are sort of these van truck vehicles where there's a window and they're used to deliver food and, uh, and relief items um, to uh, people in affected areas um, were diverted uh, by leadership to instead be backdrops at press conferences um, and in photo ops. And uh, this was done at a level that was actually uh, hurting the relief effort. And, and this is not just drawn from accounts of people at the time. Uh, we also published on ProPublica a uh, lessons learned presentation by the Red Cross where uh, there's a slide that says hindrances to service delivery, and the first bullet point is national headquarters, and then under that it says uh, national headquarters was diverting assets for public relations purposes. You talked about the, the Hurricane Isaac even before Sandy, the two of them, uh, when Red Cross ordered 80 trucks and emergency response vehicles to leave the lot empty, drive around Mississippi to make it look like they were doing something. That's right. Um, we, we've talked to uh, multiple people who uh, either observed or actually uh, took part in that um, incident. I spoke with uh, one of the emergency uh, response vehicle drivers who is a volunteer, like most uh, Red Cross workers, um, had driven uh, from North Carolina to respond to Isaac, uh, which hit the Gulf Coast a couple months before Sandy, um, and told me that uh, the, that the Red Cross effort was actually worse than the storm, and um, and in particular there was this incident where uh, he was told to take his uh, emergency response vehicle out and just drive around uh, to make it look like uh, they were doing something. Mm -hmm.